This is Twit. Now, it's been a while since we talked about a good old fashioned Apple gate, but according to iFixit, there's an issue with the cable tie in the Touch Bar MacBook Pros and actually the other MacBook Pros from 2016. Uh, the cable connects this display to a display co controller board and under underneath the touch bar. And every time you open or close the laptop, those cables start to fatigue and tear. And eventually they will give out entirely. Joining us to talk about this issue uh, that they're calling Flexgate is Taylor Dixon, writer at iFixit. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you very much for having me on. So first tell us some of the symptoms from these fraying cables. So there are two popular symptoms and this is actually how we first kind of discovered the issue is these symptoms. Um, the first one is the backlights along the bottom of your display will start to go out. And it's kind of like every other one and it looks like stage lights. And so that's that's the, the famous symptom is the stage light symptom. Mm. And that's that's caused by like the initial tear. And then as the tear gets worse over time, the backlight just goes out completely as you open the laptop. I was going to ask about the severity of the stage light thing. Like if it's something that you have to like look at really hard in order to see it, uh, like our editor, Jeff, uh, or sorry, Josh here, who normally switches this show, he has this really unique ability to see imperfections in monitors mm -hmm. that no one else can see. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah. he gets really stressed out about it. <laughs> um, is this the kind of thing that only he would see or it's, it, there's no denying it's there? This one is pretty easy to see. There's almost no denying that it's there. Hmm. So this was discovered a, a few weeks ago. Um, how has Apple responded? They actually have yet to respond in any way that I know of. Uh, most of the news outlets who picked up our story said that they reached out to Apple for comments and none of them have said anything to us or posted anything about it. And we also have yet to hear anything. So, Oh man, look at that video. I mean, it's just crumpling. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So, so but previous MacBooks don't have this problem. What did they use instead of these sort of fragile cables? So, they what what they had was a clutch cover, and I'll show you one of the. This is the new MacBook Pro display. Along the bottom here, on the older MacBook Pros, there was a clutch cover there, and the cables were beefier they were thicker but they could route them through that clutch cover instead of having to bend them like around the hinge if that makes sense so instead of it like folding almost like you know folding over a piece of paper and you know making it a nice sharp sharp edge yeah. it was almost like a little kind of passageway that it could pass yeah, through yeah, so exactly. it prevented like it that from happening through. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, w one question I had about this, like obviously this is a very small, thin component, already looks incredibly fragile, and it's positioned in such a way that it's, it, like you said in your write-up, it's not if, it's when this wears out over time. Yeah. Uh, is there any chance that like extreme temperatures or any sort of temperature fluctuations could speed up that process? Like if, if the laptop happens to be, I don't know, anywhere where this, this crazy cold weather is happening right now, um, could that be even worse for something like this? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that temperature variations obviously have an effect to some degree, but I wouldn't say necessarily that they would be enough of a factor to make a difference in like the longevity of the issue. Say like, I, I don't think that you would be able to notice right. just because of that. Right. So this is part of the reason you're reporting this is this is part of an overall bigger problem. Like Apple wanted to make the laptop thinner, so they made these part of the display. These cables are part of the display now, which means that they just can't be replaced. You couldn't just open it up and replace. You have to replace the entire display. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So w with the previous MacBook Pros, they had that clutch cover. And that could be removed just by removing the display. The next step could be remove the clutch cover and then the cable would just snap off. But on the newer ones, there is no clutch cover there. And so the cables are just right. They go right into the display. So then thinner, thank goodness I have a thinner laptop. It can fit in my tiny little yeah, purse. Right? But then I have to replace the entire thing, which just adds exactly. to more waste and et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> Both earth waste and your money waste. Yeah. Um, 
conspiracists <laughs> might say that integrating this very delicate uh, cable into the display itself is a really great way to ensure replacement uh, cost, i.e. more money on the back end or what, you know, they're, they're long, you know, we've long heard of people talking about planned obsolescence or technology companies, yeah. you know, building this into their technology so that we're guaranteed usually when the warranty runs out to have to repair it or replace it. Uh, what What is your take on that? I mean, it really seems like building this component into a display, turning a $5 problem into a $600 problem, that's a pretty convenient problem. For Apple. Yeah. And the most convenient part is that it's happening right like along the year mark. So between one to right. two years is when the symptoms are showing up, which is right after the warranty. Ugh. And I I mean, as I, I try to give companies the benefit of the doubt because these the people who are designing these machines are very smart and they're just trying to meet the demands of the consumers and their bosses. So I am a little generous and I like to say that it is not planned directly, but there it's, it's hard to say there may be some, you know, corporate scheme that says <laughs> we're going to make these more fragile. And I, I doubt that they would be able to plan it to like exactly the one year mark right, right after right. your warranty ends. But, but man, it always works knows, out that you know? way. I swear. I know it does. I don't get it. I don't understand. Well, that's because when it doesn't work out that way, you don't think about it. That's so true. You're biased. Okay. Yeah, that hey, is, that's a really good negativity point. Negativity bias yes. is what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, Very good point. So Very what good. what could Apple have done differently? Like, was there was there a way in which, I mean, you've opened these up. You you understand how they work inside. What, what could they have done differently to prevent this, um, the quick fraying? I mean, there are a couple things. The the biggest, the heart of the issue is the cables bending over that display controller board, like you said, Megan. And so part of me just wishes that they wouldn't have had those cables bend over the board. You know, they could just have made them come straight up off of the board and it would reduce the wear and tear. They would still be bending every time you open and close the laptop, but at least they wouldn't be bending against the board. Um, beyond that, I mean, zooming out, you could say like, yeah, they shouldn't have made it so thin and they could have kept the clutch cover design, but obviously they, they don't want to do that. So I don't know. How, how do you rate Apple in terms of, of owning up to it, situations like this and actually addressing problems with hardware like this? I know my own personal experience in very recent months here at work with an iMac that I've had that's had these weird, random, hard to demonstrate, but definitely they're shutdowns that require a full unplug and replug of the device of, of the iMac into a power supply in order to get it to boot back up. So it's obviously not just some random piece of software. Yet every time we take it into Apple, they're like, eh, I don't know, we can't do anything about it. It's like, <laughs> okay, well, you got it's it's a problem. And it's definitely there. What? How yeah. do you rate Apple in terms of addressing these things? I, I think to rate Apple, you have to separate the genius bar techs from the company as a whole. Yeah, And the true. company as a whole, I've actually been fairly impressed with recently. They seem to be coming out more and more with open acknowledgement of problems. Like, I mean, obviously, sometimes there is a bunch of negative press and they have to address it. But the battery replacement was honestly a little bit impressive to me that they would like extend that warranty and give you a $30 battery replacement. That that seemed like a nice thing to do from a corporate level. Mm -hmm. Their genius bar techs, though, I have a little bit more of a problem with because they, I mean, they are under a lot of pressure and there are a lot of people coming in and out of those stores, but they often do a terrible job of diagnosing problems that, I mean... From from not looking hard enough to see the problem, like your problem, mm -hmm. to just blatantly lying to customers, it seems like sometimes. So on the genius front, I have to say that I am consistently disappointed with them. Hmm. Okay, so I think I might have misspoken. What what does this? Uh, which models does this really affect? Is it just the 2016, or is it the 2017 um, MacBook Pro and and the MacBook Air? Does it affect that at all? So you did not misspeak. You you had it very well, actually. Uh, the this affects everything, all of the MacBook Pros since 2016. 
So touch bar or non-touch bar, everything with a USB-C port basically until now that has the same design. Um, <clears throat> the MacBook Air uses a similar design in that the cables are folded over the display controller board, but they seem to be, the cables are slightly longer and they aren't as compressed in there. So we're not sure if they were aware of the problem and tried to fix it in the air or if just there was a little more space so they gave it more breathing room. But we'll have to wait for another couple of months until the air has been out for a while to see for sure if it shows up. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, Taylor. I just love what you yeah. guys are doing it. I fix it. Taylor Dixon is a teardown engineer and a writer at I fix it, uh, where you can find all of his work in a video and, and more information about this story. Thanks so much for coming Thank on. Thank you, Taylor. Yeah. Thank you.